I'm Mark Halley, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Angel fish in a reef tank. Some people would say that's a horrible idea because they're going to eat all your coral. Now that's not always the case, and before I dive into that, you have to understand why angels have such a reputation. The angel fish that get the rest of their kind of bad rap naturally eat sponges and tunicates. Sponges and tunicates tend to occur around coral, so we've got food naturally occurring next to our beloved coral. That means the fish is looking for food around coral. Add on the fact that most tanks are nearly completely devoid of sponges, so we've got a fish that wants to pick food off the rocks, but their preferred food isn't there. From a get them to eat something standpoint, that's not the end of the world, as most angels will easily accept frozen food. But you still got a fish that naturally likes to nip. Now don't let one bad apple spoil the whole bunch, because a lot of angels will avoid your corals. Angelfish in the Genocanthus genus are the most reef safe angels. If you look at them in the wild, they're mid level planktivores. That means they stay off the reef and they eat things out of the water column. Now, my favorite Genocanthus angels are the swallowtail angel. I have a pair of these in my reef tank and they're absolutely stunning. The male and the female look vastly different from one another, and having a mated pair is something that's really enjoyable to see in your reef tank. Now, I'm branching out to other types of angels, that's when you fall into the fish on the fringe category. If you're choosing little tiny pomacanthus like emperor angels, the sex striatus angel, which I really love, the semicircle angels, they get really, really big. They're only appropriate for really large habitats, and if it's a reef tank, you've got hundreds of gallons to play with. You also have to know to feed them a lot of food. That's the only way to keep them from picking on your corals. The centripige angels, aka dwarf angels, definitely fall into the fish on the fringe category as they can get nippy. Since they are smaller, they can be very hard to remove from your tank. These fish hang around coral structures on the reef, so they're very skilled at being elusive. The coral beauty and the flame angel are popular fish from this genus due to their low price and wide availability. Both of these fish can get nippy and or territorial, and if they do, good luck at getting them out of your reef. The palmacanthus, catodontoplus, Aplomichthys and Holacanthus genus all get much larger than the dwarf angels, and these fish are all riskier to your reef because they are the ones that like to eat sponges and tunicates in nature. Their palates are simply more diverse. SPS corals aren't as much as risk as clam mantles and fleshy LPS. All those fleshy corals are just so irresistible. With all the angels I've covered, that leaves out the Pyroplites genus, home of the regal angel. A very pretty angel that are known for being hard to acclimate to captive life. The people who keep this fish tell me the Red Sea variants with the yellow bellies are the best ones to keep. Now I mostly avoid beagles except for very experienced clients. It's just not worth the risk and the time involved for most people if the fish stops eating. If you want to branch out with your angel fish selection, here's some advice from a guy who's done it. Hey, my name is Fadi and I have seven angel fish in this 180 gallon reef tank. The first angel I got is the Emperor angel fish. I got it three years ago when it was just a small juvenile and it took around two years for it to transform to a full adult coloration. I also have another three female Ginecanthus angels, swallowtail angelfish, masked or Japanese swallowtail angelfish, and wanatapi angelfish. I also had a Lamarck angel that I had to remove because it was fighting with a Japanese angel. Most probably, the fight started because both of the fish is starting to turn male at the same time. In addition, I have Coral Beauty and Rusty Angel. And the last angel I added to my aquarium is the Venusta Angelfish that I added one year ago. As you can see, my tank is dominated by SPS corals. And I have no problem with angels except for few nippings here and there, especially from the Venusta Angelfish. The only problem that I have with SPS is that sometimes there is not enough polyp extension. But, but corals are healthy and growing and have amazing colors. So it's okay for me. I can't keep zoanthids because the Emperor Angel keeps eating them. Also, Akans are not doing great in my tank. They are doing okay because they are uh, constantly nipped by Venusta angelfish. Other LPS and soft corals in my tank are doing great and the angels don't touch them at all. What worked with me with the different angels I have is to get them as small as possible. 
also small juveniles, uh, I think they don't develop yet the taste of corals that they will start eating every coral in your tank. I also noticed that angelfish like to hide inside caves and under overhangs. These caves and overhangs are very important, especially for deep water angelfish, like the Wenatapi angelfish and the Japanese uh, swallowtail and the Venusta angelfish. These angels are not used to the highlight output that we use in our aquarium. So keeping these angels in a tank that have a lot of dark and quiet spaces to hide in it from the intense light will be very useful for them until they acclimate to the strong light. I also noticed that the deep water angelfish do better in a lower temperature around 77 Fahrenheit. I love to write angelfish in a reef tank. The genicanthus angels in my reefs have always been model citizens. They've never touched any coral and they've never bothered any other fish. If you're willing to branch out, roll the dice a little bit, and you've got the skills to back it up in case that angel becomes high maintenance and needs specialized feeding, go for it, try the other genuses, let me know how it works. I would love to see what's worked for you in your reef. I'm Mark Callan, and Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. I'll catch you in the next episode.